Car tester Mattis Kurat is standing on a hunter's perch at the edge of a forest. And about 50 meters behind him, there's an autobahn. That's the challenge for the two cars he'll be testing, two old-fashioned off-roaders. The Mercedes G, which except for the interior is practically unchanged since its introduction in 1979, and the Jeep Wrangler, which has a genealogy stretching all the way back to the Willis Jeep of 1941. Although a bit more has been changed here in the meantime. Still, these are thoroughbred off-road vehicles that love to get down and dirty. We've got three tasks for them today, namely how they negotiate normal country roads, then autobahns, and finally, off-road terrain, as a reward, so to speak. First stop for the Mercedes is the autobahn. Should be child's play for a car with 388 horsepower. Mattis says the G's handling is much the same as that of a regular car. But the noise here when he steps on the gas is almost unbearable. When he's driving 170, the noise meter reads almost 80 decibels, which for a car of this price class, which you might want to drive for longer distances sometimes, is really extremely loud. The meter occasionally even jumps as high as 89 decibels. Does the Jeep perform better in this category? Mattis finds that driving the Jeep Wrangler feels pretty much like driving a truck. But you can drive faster, which he's going to do now, and find out how loud it is in the cabin. Eighty-one decibels at 170 kilometers per hour. That means the Jeep Wrangler drives quieter than the Mercedes G500, which costs almost three times as much. That's an astonishing result. The Mercedes G is a classic car. In the 31 years it's been in production, the car's been optically modernized a couple of times, as in 2009, when the radiator grill was left with only three slats in place of the previous seven but its basic design remains the same. Less robust features include the painted bumpers and mirrors with built-in blinkers, but in general it's a robust animal, almost impervious. Step boards and lateral protection strips invite you to get this car really dirty. the same feeling looking at the Jeep Wrangler Unlimited. Plenty of unpainted black plastic on the outside, which on an off-roader has practical reasons. Accidentally sliding into a tree or rock in rough terrain wouldn't require such expensive bodywork or paint jobs afterward. The G-Class ragtop is available with only two doors. The Wrangler Unlimited version has four, and a shorter version can also be had with two doors. As Mattis points out, there aren't many SUVs with soft tops that you can even open, but these models are both in that club, and since the sun's shining today, why not drop the roof? On the Mercedes, the whole thing is quickly accomplished. After pulling two release levers, it's finished with the push of a button. The whole roof is stowed automatically in the back, which is very convenient when you're driving alone or if it suddenly starts raining, because you don't want any water to get on these nice leather seats. 
Jeep Wrangler. On the Jeep Wrangler, the procedure is more complicated. There's some manual labor needed. It's not easily done when alone, and it takes a while. So we decided to speed matters up a bit. Depending on how careful and practice you are, it takes between one and five minutes to open the top. It looks a bit scrunched up, Mathis says. Maybe we should have looked at the owner's manual. On the country road, the G displays the same characteristics as on the Autobahn. It heads into curves with little steering needed. The high centre of gravity naturally increases its rolling tendency, but the driver feels secure and in control. Its fuel consumption, officially 14.7 and actually 16 litres per 100 kilometres, is partially a function of the car's shape. Anyone pushing into the wind with a barn door has to use a lot of energy. Off the roads, three differential locks, permanent all-wheel drive, switchable off-road transfer and a clearance of 22 centimetres all provide stability and traction. Should the challenge still prove too great and the car gets stuck, it can mostly be freed with a bit of luck and skill, though admittedly street tyres are a compromise, even on a real off-road vehicle. The Jeep requires more attention from the driver on the country road. The very indirect steering gives a feeling that isn't as secure or controlled as the Mercedes does. The suspension is a bit softer, which also increases roll tendency in curves. Fuel consumption is an average of two to three litres higher than listed, likewise partially because of the car's high weight and wind resistance. The Jeep shows its biggest strengths away from the road. With 25.7 centimetres ground clearance, switchable all-wheel drive, gear reductions and differential locks, this car has all it needs to negotiate the roughest surfaces. And here too, for off-road usage, off-road tyres are a must. As Mattis says, these are two off-roaders that live up to their name. The Mercedes G and the Jeep Wrangler. At just under €100,000 in the 500 version, the G isn't cheap, but offers lots of luxury inside. A big minus point is the noise level on the Autobahn. For this price, 90 decibels are too much. In comparison, in the forest, only 35 decibels. Peace and quiet. The Jeep Wrangler is more convincing off-road because it's simply the more basic version and you don't have to worry about hitting something because the unpainted plastic is very tough and can take a lot. And that's why the winner today, even though my favourite used to be the G, he says, is the Jeep Wrangler.